friends, it's Caitlin from Emerald and Ivy Studios and I'm really excited to share with you this new project that I've been working on. I am an art book hoarder. I order them all the time. I just love reading what other artists have written. I love supporting other artists and small businesses and I just love learning. So I have a whole collection and I just wanted to share my very favorite one with you and this is not sponsored. I bought this on Amazon with my own money. So it's called The Joy of Watercolor, 40 Happy Lessons for Painting the World Around You. It's written by Emma Block. She's this awesome illustrator, watercolor painter, and I'm just like obsessed with her. So the book is, is set up really nicely where she explains like the history of watercolor and all the basics and it's just awesome. I knew most, you know, I knew this material that she goes over, but it's really good if you are new to watercolors. What I love the book for is it helps me stretch creatively to think of new little projects to paint. I kind of get stuck in painting a lot of flowers, as you can see. I love painting flowers, but it's good to stretch yourself. So I've been filling up my sketchbook with some of her prompts, like I did some birds. Um, I did some of these little cute little, cute little puppies. They're so cute! I can't handle it! Anyways, she gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to paint these little projects. So I love plants. Love flowers, love plants. I'm wearing plant socks right now, you guys. On page 89, she goes over how to paint various potted plants. I think she's got a fiddle. Um, I think that might be another fiddle. And then like a rubber plant, rubber tree. So she goes through all the basics of how how to go about painting this gorgeous scene and I um, used it as like a jumping off point for my own work so I didn't really want to paint all three I didn't want it to be this big scene I just wanted to paint this beautiful fiddle leaf fig tree because that's my favorite and I have one in my office and I also decided to add a geometric pattern to the pot and I used white gouache it's just really awesome to work with and it's opaque so you can paint over top of a dark color, which you can't do with traditional watercolor paints. It's just not as um, opaque. So I painted my um, red pot, and then when it was dry, I went over it with some watered down white gouache, and I got to make this cute little geometric pattern. So if you'd like to join along, please feel free to grab some paper, some paints. Definitely go check out her book. It's so good. Like I said, this isn't sponsored. She doesn't know who I am. I just love it. So this is a true, true recommendation. Please go check it out. All right, let's have fun. Let's paint a plant. To get started with this project, I am sketching out the plant that I want to paint. Um, typically in my work in the past, I don't do this step. I like to just paint straight away. But because this is what... Emma goes over in her book, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot. So I just have my drawing pencil, it's a 2H, but you're welcome, you know, you can use any pencils just fine. I start with my pot and now I'm sketching the center of the plant or the big long stem. And then I sketch out the top leaf shape for the fiddle. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and add in the next two leaves. And then I'm going to add the rest of the leaves really quickly before we get started painting. For my ceramic pot, I've mixed up a nice orangey red and I just outline the shape that I sketched and then fill it in slowly, just adding more water as I go. I like to have a watercolor effect so it's not really opaque, not really solid red. It just looks a little watered down. Just dropping in some more um, paint to finish off, make it look a little speckled. Now I'm gonna add in the stem. And as you can see, I got a little bit of the brown paint touching my still wet red ceramic pot. And I do not love how that looks. Normally I'm not too much of a stickler, but I wanna change that. So I drop in a little bit of water 
and lift it up with my paper towel. And it lifted up a little too much paint, so I'm just gonna add in a little bit more red paint to the top. And that's just a really good example of why watercolors are so flexible. Now it's time to add in the green paint for our beautiful, gorgeous fiddly fig leaves. If you've been around my channel for long, you know I love painting leaves. I have like 10 videos about it. <laughs> so if you need help learning how to mix colors or to get ideas on this step, feel free to go look through my channel. But essentially, I just like to mix. Um, my favorite straight out of the tube is to use uh, permanent sap green. Um, and then I usually like to add in a little bit of red, a little bit of um, burnt umber to make it look more natural and earthy. Because a lot of times when you use green right out of the tube or right out of the pan, it's just not natural looking. So play around with what colors you can mix in um, and you can get a more natural looking painting. So now I'm just working on my second leaf and kind of like the pot I like to outline the general shape and then fill in slowly with a little more water on my brush Now that I'm going to work on this third leaf, I'm going to turn my watercolor block or turn your paper a little bit so it's easier for my um, dominant hand to paint it. In retrospect, I probably should have painted the left side first since I am right-handed, um, but turning your, your paper can work just as well. I'm going to be really careful. I don't want these to to touch quite yet just because the top leaf um, is still wet and I don't want them to look like one giant muddied leaf. So I'm leaving a small thin white line um, so that they are defined as two different leaves. And I'm just gonna finish filling this in and do repeat the same process for the rest of the leaves um, making sure that I change up the paint color that I'm using so that not every single leaf is the same exact color. So I might add in a little more red or a little more brown um, just to make sure they look lifelike. Now that my leaves are painted and dried, make sure they're dry, I'm taking my really tiny round brush, I think it's a size zero, and I'm gonna go ahead and add in some veining for my leaves with a darker shade of green. I've mixed in a little bit of black to make sure that it's a nice dark shade so that you can um, tell that it contrasts with the leaf color. I like to start with painting the main vein down the middle of the leaf and then painting the, um, the lines that shoot off from it towards the end of the leaf. And then I'm just going to turn my paper whenever I need to. I'm going to line up each side and it's okay if they're not all straight. It's better actually if they're a little bit of um, there's a little bit of curve to them just makes it look more natural and then I'm gonna go ahead and do this for the rest of the leaves
Now that everything is dry and I've mixed up some white gouache with a little bit of water, I am taking my smallest round brush and I'm adding a fun geometric pattern to my red ceramic pot. There's really no rhyme or reason to this. This isn't included in the book. I just kind of went with the flow and painted as I went. Um, I like doing um, shapes like triangles and then adding in dots and dashes. But you can do whatever geometric shape you want. Um, you could even do florals. It's, it's totally up to you. Just play around with it. Gouache is definitely a really fun and versatile medium and I'm excited to practice more with it since I'm pretty new to it. But it's just really fun to be able to add a light color on top of a dark color, which traditionally isn't a possibility with watercolors. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video, for joining me. Um, once again, go check out her book. It's so good. And you can paint fun things like puppies and plants and even landscape scenes from Greece. It's amazing. I'll see you guys again soon. And in the meantime, feel free to check out some of my other videos on how to paint watercolor leaves. Lots of good stuff over on my channel. Hit subscribe and I'll see you soon.